Both Aperture and Godox both make a spotlight modifier for bones mount video lights. And ironically, they're the same exact price, which leads us to the question of which of these is better and what are the differences between the two? These are the questions that I had and I want answers to. So I asked both of these companies to send me one of their kits, which they did. We're gonna compare them in this video. Now, everything I share here is based on my own experience and is my own opinion. And if you have absolutely no idea what a spotlight modifier is or does, I'm gonna share that with you really quickly right now. Like the name implies, the spotlight modifier takes light and beams it brightly into a tight circle or spotlight. The modifier is made up of lenses that focus the light and make it brighter. Aside from that, it includes four cutters to shape the light, some slots to add gobos that create interesting textures with light and shadows, another slot for adding an iris control, and a gel holder on the front of the unit to change the color of the light. So in short, it doesn't just focus the light, it also cuts, shapes, and colors the light. This makes it a really creative element that you can bring into your work, not just for filmmaking, but also photography if the unit you're using is a Bowens mount light. Now from Godox, I have the VSA 26 degree kit. And from Aperture, I have 36 degree kit. And the number here is referring to the lens that's inside of the unit, which affects the size of the beam angle. If it's a higher number, like 36, it will have a wider beam angle. If it's a lower number, like 26 or even 19, it's a tighter beam angle. Each brand only has three options to choose from for lenses, which is 36, 26 and 19 degree beam angle lenses. It might be worth noting that the aperture lens only fits inside of the aperture unit, while the Godox lens can fit into the aperture unit as well. Not all parts for both brands work between each other, so just keep that in mind. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the similarities and differences between these two, since that's gonna be the biggest tell of why you choose one over the other. First off, let's talk about the case that they come in. Aperture has a simple case with latches that you snap quickly, open and shut. The spotlight mount is inside precise cut foam and is in a ready to go state. You simply grab it, set it up, and it's ready to go within a few seconds. Godox, on the other hand, has a larger and more traditional case for lighting gear. It also has custom fit foam for the unit, but comes disassembled and requires you to assemble and disassemble the lens each time you want to use the unit. Now I have tried to find a way to use the custom fit foam and keep the unit in a ready to go state, but unfortunately that doesn't seem possible unless you forgo the custom fit foam. Now both of the units weigh about the same and are built nearly identically. In fact, at first glance, you might assume that they are exactly the same. However, there are some differences. Each of these units feature four cutters that are built into the unit. Aperture's cutters move very smoothly, while Godox's are a little bit more resistant, but are completely usable. The yoke on the Godox unit is really nice and firm, even while it's loose, so you don't have to worry about it drifting or dropping suddenly, and when you tighten it, it's definitely not going anywhere, even with the light on it. Aperture, on the other hand, when it's loose, it does drift very quickly and suddenly without the light on it, and when you put the light on it, it will drop very quickly. So you gotta make sure that you're tightening that yoke all of the time with the Aperture unit. Both units feature a small sliding slot on top where the iris attachment can be placed into the unit. Be aware that you do have to purchase the iris attachment separately for both of these units. I did find, however, that the iris attachment that I have from Godox fits inside the Godox unit, of course, but also fits inside of the Aperture unit as well. When it comes to tightening and loosening the lens on both of these units to focus the lens, it's nice and smooth and there's no issues with either of them. Now, if you take a look into the front end of the glass, you'll notice that the aperture knob sticks out significantly in comparison to Godox's, which does not show up whatsoever. From what I can tell, the knob does not affect the quality of the light coming out of the aperture unit. However, there is something else that's pretty concerning when it comes to light quality and the aperture unit. In short, the aperture unit is designed only for the light storm series from Aperture. So that would be the Aperture 120Ds, 300Ds, and the 600D lights. While trying my Amaran 200D and 60D on the spotlight unit, I noticed that there was some light aberration, patterns, and discoloration with the light. These issues were really significant and very obvious on the 60D, but less noticeable on the Amaran 200D. I mentioned this issue to my contact at Aperture, and their reply was that the light storm lights have better mixing technology and are designed for for the spotlight, while the cheaper Amarans are not designed for the spotlight, thus why they're more of an affordable light, and they're missing out on some of the higher-end premium features that are found in the Lightstorm line. Now, what makes this really get interesting 
and kind of juicy is that when I tried these same lights at the same power settings on the Godox unit, there was absolutely none of these issues. It was a perfect clean output, no aberration, discoloration, or patterning or distortion. So the bottom line here is that the Godox spotlight unit seems to work with any light that you throw at it and not just from inside of its own brand. I'm not really sure why the Godox unit is performing better than the Aperture unit, but whatever it's doing, it's making it a more versatile option because it works with any light instead of the Aperture unit, which is only working with a few lights from Aperture. Speaking of being versatile, you might be wondering which accessories you need to get for these units and what do they come with? Both of these brands send their spotlight units obviously with a case, we already talked about those, but they do send them with three gobos, a gobo holder and a gel holder. So if you want more gobo kits or options, gel kits, or an iris control, you're gonna have to purchase those separately from each of these brands. Now I do have all of the accessories from Godox for this spotlight kit, and my favorite out of them all is the iris attachment. It's really smooth and it just helps to control the light down a little bit further. I do have all the Gobo kits and out of all of them, I only see myself using a few of them since I lean more towards the practical lighting effects personally. When it comes to my overall experience with both of these units, I have to say I love the Aperture case for how easy it is to quickly set up and tear down this modifier. The ready to go-ness of the case is my personal favorite part of the unit but I have a hard time liking it when half of the lights that I own don't work properly with it due to that aberration and pattern discoloring issue that the unit has. I really love how the Godox unit works with any light that I own and looks really great while using it. It's also kind of neat that the Godox accessories works on the Aperture unit, while unfortunately the Aperture ones don't always work on the Godox unit. What I don't like so much about Godox is the case experience. It's a bit of a pain to have to assemble and disassemble the unit every single time I want to set it up or take it down. It's unnecessary and wasted time that as a filmmaker, I already have lots of time that I spend doing stuff. I don't need more of it being wasted on assembling a unit. And from a design perspective, I will say the Aperture case has a much more sleek and techy feel to it versus the Godox unit just being a little bit more boring and a standard looking light case. However, you could argue that the Godox case has added protection due to that double layering and also that it has the zippers which you could lock easily together. But at the end of the day, it's a case, so you can decide if that matters to you or not. Otherwise, these are very similar in function and only yield different results based on the light that you use with the units. I even took measurements of the same light, same power through both of these units, and the numbers were nearly spot on. No pun intended. So the big question is, which one should you get? I would say whichever one's the least troublesome sounding to you. Whichever one you choose, just be aware that Apertures only works with the Lightstorm series lights from Aperture, while Godox is a bit more versatile, but has a slower setup and teardown time. Now, if you're wondering how bright this spotlight unit is, what it looks like in different situations, or when should you use the spotlight over say a projection unit or an optical snoot or a Fresnel or just a traditional snoot? Then you're gonna to wanna to check out this video right here because that one will answer all of those questions and maybe some you haven't even thought about. And thanks for watching this video. Oh, and if it's not there right now, it's because it's about to come out. So hang tight, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching.